Here is Synthax, a time traveler from the year 2500. In the early 21st century, the Team 0.5, or Transmission Electron Aberration Corrected Microscope, was a marvel of scientific engineering. With a resolution of half an angstrom, which is one ten millionth of a millimeter, it was capable of distinguishing features narrower than a single hydrogen atom. This cutting-edge technology allowed researchers to delve into the molecular and atomic realms, opening up new frontiers in material science, biology, and nanotechnology. As I arrived at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, I could feel the excitement in the air. The facility itself was located on a picturesque hill overlooking the San Francisco Bay Area, and I could see the iconic Golden Gate Bridge in the distance. The lab was bustling with scientists, engineers, and technicians, all dedicated to advancing our understanding of the world at the atomic scale. I was given a guided tour of the facility by a knowledgeable scientist, who explained the inner workings of the Team 0.5. It was a complex feat of engineering, consisting of several key components, a high-voltage electron gun, a series of electromagnetic lenses, an ultra-stable support structure, and a highly sensitive detector. The electron gun was responsible for generating a beam of high-energy electrons, which was then focused by the electromagnetic lenses. These lenses were designed to correct for aberrations in the beam, ensuring that the electron waves remained coherent and focused. The support structure provided a stable platform for the entire system, minimizing vibrations and other disturbances that could impact the microscope's performance. As we approached the microscope, I could see the scientists working diligently at their control stations. They were using the Team 0.5 to study a variety of materials, from advanced metal alloys to delicate biological samples. The powerful microscope allowed them to visualize the atomic structure of these materials, revealing important information about their properties and behavior. One such study focused on a new type of battery material, which promised to revolutionize energy storage. The researchers were using the Team 0.5 to analyze the atomic structure of the material, hoping to uncover the secrets of its enhanced performance. By understanding how the atoms were arranged and how they interacted, they hoped to optimize the material and develop even more efficient batteries. Another project involved the study of a protein implicated in a devastating neurological disease. By observing the protein at the atomic scale, the scientists hoped to gain insights into its function and behavior, which could ultimately lead to new therapies and treatments for the condition. As I continued my exploration of the laboratory, I learned more about the history of the Team 0.5 and the advancements that led to its development. The development of electron microscopy started in the early 20th century, when scientists like Ernst Ruska and Max Knoll began experimenting with electron beams as a way to bypass the limitations of optical microscopes. It wasn't until the 1980s and 1990s that aberration-corrected electron microscopy took off, paving the way for the groundbreaking Team 0.5. The Team 0.5 microscope was a collaborative project between several institutions, including the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, the National Center for Electron Microscopy, and the University of California, Berkeley. The project was funded by the U.S. Department of Energy, and its primary goal was to push the boundaries of what was possible with electron microscopy, enabling researchers to gain unprecedented insights into the atomic world. The Team 0.5 was not the only powerful microscope in existence during the early 21st century. Other research institutions were also making strides in the field of electron microscopy. One such example was the Titan Creos, a cryo-electron microscope developed by Thermo Fisher Scientific. This microscope was designed specifically for studying biological samples at cryogenic temperatures, allowing scientists to observe the intricate structure of proteins, viruses, and other biological macromolecules in their native state. The Titan Creos employed a technique known as single-particle cryo-electron microscopy, which involved rapidly freezing biological samples to preserve their structure and minimize radiation damage. The resulting images could then be computationally combined to generate high-resolution three-dimensional reconstructions of the samples. This technique allowed researchers to better understand the workings of complex molecular machines, such as the ribosome which is responsible for protein synthesis in cells. Another notable microscope during this era was the JEOL GEM ARM200F, a powerful atomic resolution transmission electron microscope developed by the Japanese company JEOL. The GEM ARM200F featured a cold field emission gun, 
which provided a highly coherent electron beam, as well as a spherical aberration corrector that significantly improved image resolution. With these advanced features, the GEM ARM200F was capable of achieving sub-angstrom resolution, allowing researchers to observe atomic structures in great detail. Aside from these state-of-the-art electron microscopes, there were also significant advancements in optical microscopy during the early 21st century. One notable example was the development of super-resolution microscopy techniques, such as stimulated emission depletion (STED) microscopy and stochastic optical reconstruction microscopy (STORM). These techniques allowed researchers to overcome the diffraction limit of traditional optical microscopy, enabling the observation of structures at the nanometer scale. As I delved deeper into the history of microscopy, I discovered that the pursuit of ever higher resolution was not without its challenges. One of the primary limitations of electron microscopy was the need to work in a high vacuum environment, as the presence of air molecules would scatter the electron beam and reduce image quality. This requirement posed a significant challenge for the study of biological samples, which often required a hydrated environment to maintain their native structure. To overcome this challenge, scientists developed several techniques to prepare biological samples for electron microscopy. One such technique was the aforementioned cryo-electron microscopy, which involved rapidly freezing samples to preserve their structure. Another technique was called the staining method, in which biological samples were treated with heavy metal salts, such as uranyl acetate or lead citrate. These heavy metal stains provided contrast by preferentially binding to certain structures within the sample, allowing the scientists to visualize them more easily. The development of aberration corrected electron microscopes like the Team 0.5 also necessitated improvements in the stability and precision of the microscope supporting infrastructure. Even the smallest vibrations, such as those caused by nearby traffic or air conditioning systems, could impact the microscope's performance and image quality. To address this issue, the Team 0.5 was housed in a specially designed room with advanced vibration isolation systems, temperature control, and electromagnetic shielding. As the resolution of electron microscopes improved, so did the need for more powerful computational resources to process and analyze the vast amounts of data generated during imaging sessions. Researchers relied on advanced algorithms and high-performance computing clusters to reconstruct images from the raw data, identify important features within the images, and compare the observed structures to theoretical models. During my visit to the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, I also had the opportunity to learn about some of the emerging microscopy techniques that were being developed at the time. One such technique was electron tichography, a form of coherent diffractive imaging that promised to provide even higher resolution images than conventional electron microscopy. By combining a focused electron beam with iterative phase retrieval algorithms, electron tichography allowed researchers to reconstruct high-resolution images from the scattered electron waves without the need for objective lenses. Another promising technique was the combination of atomic force microscopy AFM, with other imaging modalities, such as Raman spectroscopy or fluorescence microscopy. AFM relied on a sharp probe to map the surface topography of a sample with nanometer scale resolution, while Raman spectroscopy or fluorescence microscopy provided complementary information about the sample's chemical composition or molecular interactions. By integrating these techniques into a single instrument, researchers could obtain a more comprehensive view of their samples at the nanoscale. The advancements in microscopy that I witnessed during my visit to the early 21st century were truly remarkable, and it was evident that these tools had a profound impact on a wide range of scientific disciplines. From understanding the inner workings of cells and the molecular basis of disease to unraveling the mysteries of advanced materials and nanotechnology, the powerful microscopes of the time played a critical role in driving scientific progress. As I prepared to leave the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory and return to my own time, I couldn't help but reflect on the incredible ingenuity and dedication of the researchers and engineers who developed these groundbreaking instruments. Their tireless efforts to push the boundaries of what was possible in microscopy not only laid the foundation for countless discoveries but also paved the way for the even more advanced microscopes that would be developed in the centuries to come. As I made my way back to the time machine, I took one last look at the Team 0.5, appreciating the profound impact it had on the world of science. I marveled at the power of human curiosity and the pursuit of knowledge, which continued to drive progress and shape the future in ways both large and small. And so, 
with a newfound appreciation for the remarkable history of microscopy and the pioneering scientists who made it all possible, I stepped into the time machine and began my journey back to the year 2500. As the whirring of the machine grew louder and the world around me began to blur, I felt grateful for the opportunity to witness such a fascinating chapter in the history of science. Until we meet again, farewell.